Greetings. In this video, I'm going to provide advice on how to learn the notes of the entire fretboard. We want to have fluency, not being able to just go up and down one string or manage just this open position, but being able to know all the notes everywhere and being able to confidently move up through the strings in this middle dark zone is especially challenging. But the methods I will share later in this video will help to train your brain to know exactly where you are when you are even up at this 10th fret area where it just doesn't get encountered as much in sheet music and such. My intended audience is classical guitarists, so the methods I will be recommending do include working out of a method book that teaches you open position. I have a video series on the Christopher Parkening Classical Guitar Method Volume 1, which teaches you to read music in the first four frets and on the open strings. And I encourage you to start there if you haven't already learned those notes. This method is progressive. You want to start with learning the open position and we're going to build from there. The following step is to practice really getting to know your note names from the get-go. We don't want to just connect the dots on the page to where that connects to the fretboard. We want to know what they're named, which is extremely important for being able to read music in different keys. My suggestion for that is to be able to at first be able to just name the notes as you play all the way up up through the open position. So starting on string six, open, we've got E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and we usually scoot up for A. And being able to go backwards too. G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C, B, A, G, F, E. If that's easy for you, then it's time to push your limits a little bit and skip up, step back. <clears throat> what that looks like is to go E, G, F, A, G, B, A, C, B, D, C, and so on. If you can skip up, step back, skip up, step back, and do the opposite, returning back down, it's going to challenge you to be able to really know those note names and not just be learning to say the notes in order. Once you have that established, it's time to start moving up the fretboard. What I've found to be most effective is to actually learn the notes in little stripes across the fretboard. So I learn all the notes at the 5th fret, the 7th fret, and the 10th fret. And the reason that's useful is that provides us a one-step reference point for every single fret on the fretboard. So if we've already learned all of the open position, that covers frets 1 through 4. Or really 1 through 3 on a lot of the strings, but that's still one fret distant from either three or five. So if we know through three and we know five, then you can step down from five, step up from three. Here's what that means. Let's say I need to know where F sharp is on the fourth string. Well, I know F is right here, so F sharp is just one step away. If I know the fifth fret notes, then I know G is right here and F sharp will be one step backwards. So it fills in this gap just by knowing one step. It's a very simple brain process that you'll develop and become very fluent at. From the fifth fret, we gain access to the sixth fret. So if I know that, for example, D is right here, fifth string, fifth fret, then going up one fret is going to give me D sharp or E flat. So all of the sixth frets become available because I know the fifth frets. If I learn the seventh fret, then that gives me access to 6 again, but it also gives me access to 8. And then from 10, that gives us access to 9, and it gives us access to 11. And from 12, everything repeats. So E, A, D, G, B, E, E, A, D, G, B, and E. And from there, everything's exactly the same. And you just have to train your brain to be able to visualize where that nut, this white piece right here is referred to as the nut, and if you think of that 12th fret being like a second nut, then you can visualize where the notes are from there. How do you learn those vertical strips? Well, the most effective exercise I've come across is to simply practice steps and then steps and skips and larger skips and so on. Here's what that looks like. At first, we've got this A, D, G, C, E, A, E, C, G, D, A. 
It's a little bit of a brain stretch, but it's very good for being able to just compare where those notes are from where you're currently at. So for example, let's say I'm playing a piece of music and I play C here and I need to know where G is. Well, if we practice like this, it's gonna train us to be able to jump up a string and not have to count up the notes. So we looked at doing one string at a time, but now, once that's easy, we're gonna add a step of difficulty. So now we have this A, G, D, C, G, E, C, A, C, E, G, C, D, G, A, D, A. So what I did is string six, four. I skipped over five and then I stepped back to five. So six, five, sorry, six, four, five, three, four, two, three, one. And then I like to do a little turnaround. Do one, two, one, three, two, four, three, five, four, six, five, six. From there, you can do larger skips. You can skip two strings and go from string six to string three, and then back to string five. So it'll look like this. Six, three, five, two, four, one, three, one, four, two, five, three, six. And trust me, this is extremely effective for learning those notes. So for example, if I were to do that at the 10th fret, then I would have a D, then our F, G, A, C, D, F, D, C, A, G, F, D, C, D. It's a brain stretch, but it forces you to know what the notes are from different distances. And it, once you can get to the point where they just kind of rattle out of your brain, it's gonna improve your ability to read music in these areas dramatically. And as I said before, once you know these confidently by doing those horrible little exercises, being able to just drop one fret or up one fret is gonna be very easy. And of course, we want, need to know that the only notes that don't have a sharp or flat between them are B and C and E and F. So for example, if I'm in the open position, second string, open, and then I go from B to C, there's no B sharp or C flat between those two notes. C is B sharp and B is C flat. But between C and D, we have a C sharp or a D flat. So C, C sharp, also D flat, D. And then E and F are, the also, are also the other two that have no note in between. So knowing that, we could move up a string. Let's briefly go over the E string. We've got open, E, first fret F, and then we have an F sharp and harmonic with G flat at the second fret, G, G sharp A flat, A, A sharp B flat, B, C, C sharp D flat, D, D sharp E flat, and back to E. And of course, everything repeats from there. So if you did not know that already, there it is, practice it, get it so stuck in your brain that you just innately know that B and C have no note between them and E and F have no note between them. You just have to memorize those two pairs and the rest of them you can assume have an accidental between them. The other advice I would provide is to practice reading easy music in different positions. And don't just jump to fourth fret or jump to eighth fret or something like that. What I would encourage you to do is move progressively. You don't wanna just dive into deep water. Start with the open position where you're most confident, most likely, and then try to read the same music, but don't allow yourself to use an open string unless you absolutely have to, which in that case would be your lowest E. So when, if I'm gonna play B, I'm gonna use the fourth fret on the third string. If I'm gonna play G, I'm gonna use the fifth fret on the fourth string, and so on. And then, once that becomes easier for you, then you can step it up one fret. And once you get used to that, another fret. You get used to that, another fret. This is incredibly useful for training your brain to be able to see the possible fingerings. Reading music on the guitar is very complex because we're placing these notes onto a matrix. However, if we practice reading in progressive positions, it teaches your brain to see the possibilities for how you can do a fingering. And then if you wanna sweeten up the sound of a piece by moving an E to let's say the third string, 
See how that just gets a thick, juicy sound? You get a nicer vibrato toward the middle of the string, but if we're up here, I can't put a vibrato except by moving the guitar, which looks ridiculous. So that's one of the reasons why guitarists will play a note higher up the neck. Obviously, sometimes they just need to reach a higher note at the same time, and that would necessitate being up here, in which case I can't play that first string. In this case, I'm actually already playing that specific string, so I need to access the note in another place. So that's my advice. First, start with reading an open position, and then learn these 5th, 7th, and 10th fret notes by doing these challenging exercises that pay off. And I encourage you to simply practice that exercise three to five minutes a day at each of those positions. And after a month or two, it will aggregate and it'll become deeply embedded what notes are which. After that, you just simply step up or down a fret from five, seven, and 10. And that's gonna cover the entire fretboard, assuming you've already got that open position covered because past 12, it all repeats. And like I said, it will dramatically improve your ability to read music anywhere on the fretboard. And then the last strategy was learning to read music in progressive positions. So limiting yourself to not be able to use, let's say I'm at the third position, I can use this open e, low six E string, but past there, I can't use any of these frets, strings one through five, fret one and fret two or open. If you do that, it's going to force you to find new ways to play the same music and it's going to train your brain to be able to read in those areas, which is invaluable when you start getting to more advanced music. So I encourage you to practice this, stick with it. I would love feedback. If you could let me know if this was helpful to you, then I would be very grateful. Thank you very much for watching and I hope that this was helpful to you.